Good morning, Wham! What's up, history class? Woo! <laughs> All right. Hope everyone's doing well. We're doing chapter 12. We're going back to normal. I know we got all kind of weird last week with those videos and news articles. It's really the only way to teach those things. Uh, so now we're back and um, we're going, we're going, we've learned about our first president, George, my friend George Washington. Then John Adams, from the local from Massachusetts, was the second. And this one we're going to learn about Thomas Jefferson and how he doubled the size of the United States. We're going to talk about Lewis and Clark. It's it's going to be quite an amazing uh, chapter. It's going to squeeze a lot in. All right, so let's get learning about it. All right, and you remember Thomas Jefferson, that guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence. Well, he was our third president. We're going to learn about that right now. Okay. Chapter 12. The United States doubles in size. The man who wrote most of the Declaration of Independence became President of the United States in 1801. Americans voted for Thomas Jefferson to be their third president. The American Revolution was over. The United States owned all the land east of the Mississippi River except Florida. Imagine, no Disney. <laughs> At first, most Americans lived in the 13 states near the Atlantic Ocean. But every year, more Americans moved to the West. By 1800, almost one million Americans lived on the land between the 13 states and the Mississippi River. They built homes and farms. They started new states for the United States. In 1803, the United States had 17 states. Sometimes, Americans moved to land that was being used by American Indians. There were fights between Indian nations and settlers about who would use the land. Many American Indians were forced to leave their land. New Orleans was an important port city near the Gulf of Mexico and the Mississippi River. Many American farmers lived near the Mississippi River. They sent their farm crops and boats down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. Uh, we could say New Orleans. Uh, I think now really the correct way is New Orleans, all right? New Orleans. American farmers sold their, cr their farm crops in New Orleans. Ships from New Orleans carried the crops to port cities on the Atlantic Ocean. Spain owned Louisiana and the city of New Orleans. We read about Louisiana in Chapter 6. Well, Spain allowed American ships to use the port of New Orleans. In 1800, Spain gave New Orleans and Louisiana back to France. This is crazy. New Orleans was a French city again. President Jefferson was worried. Perhaps France would not allow Americans to use their port. President <laughs> Jefferson knew that American farmers needed the port of New Orleans. He wanted the United States to own New Orleans. Thomas Jefferson decided to offer to buy the city. Napoleon was the ruler of France. France was fighting many wars in Europe. Napoleon needed money for French wars. Jefferson asked Napoleon to sell New Orleans to the United States. Napoleon said he would sell New Orleans and all of Louisiana to the United States for $15 million. In 1803, the United States paid $15 million for Louisiana. Look at the map of Louisiana on this page. The United States now owned New Orleans and much land to the west of the Mississippi River. The United States doubled in size in 1803. You can look at that map right here. See how it doubles in size? It's crazy! President Jefferson wanted to learn about the land, plants, and animals of Louisiana. He wanted to know about the many Indian nations who lived on this land. Jefferson asked Meriwether Lewis to explore Louisiana. 
Lewis asked William Clark to explore the new land with him. They formed a group with about 35 men. Lewis and Clark started their trip across Louisiana in 1804. During the trip, Lewis and Clark kept journals. They wrote about the people, plants, animals, and mountains. An African-American named York traveled with Lewis and Clark. York was Clark's slave. He was a good hunter. York also knew how to get along well with American Indians or Native Americans. He helped Lewis and Clark become friends with more than 40 groups of Native Americans. Sometime after the trip ended, Clark gave York his freedom. During their trip, Lewis and Clark reached the tall Rocky Mountains. They wanted to cross these mountains and go to the Pacific Ocean. An American in a Native American woman told Lewis and Clark that she would help them cross the Rocky Mountains. Her name was Sacagawea. She was about 17 years old. Sacagawea said Lewis and Clark needed horses to cross the mountains. She helped them trade with her family for horses. Sacagawea and her husband led the group across the Rocky Mountains. Sacagawea had a baby boy. She carried the baby on her back. She helped the men find food. The trip across the mountains was slow and dangerous. After many months, the group traveled west to the Pacific Ocean. The map we already looked at on page 76 shows their route. In 1806, Lewis Clark and Sacagawea returned to their homes. They had explored 8,000 miles of land in the west. Lewis and Clark told Thomas Jefferson about the land they had explored. They had made new maps of the West. Thomas Jefferson helped the United States double in size. York, Sacagawea, Lewis and Clark helped Americans learn about the land in the West. All right. So I hope you have a good week. And we'll do chapter 12 all this week in history. All right. Bye, guys.